There's one. All right, our FDL kids are ready to sing their song. They learned to share for the First Communion. Um, and Heidi, if you want to come up and get some words, we'd love it if you sang with us. Come on, Heidi. Who else is here? Lena? Lilia? Here's music. Here's words right here. At 
Welcome to all our visitors, and uh, also welcome to those of you worshiping with us from home. Um, we do apologize. One of the screens decided to not work today. We don't know why. Um, and we ran out of time to figure out how to be smarter than the screen. So <laughs> sometimes, you know, electronic. What is happening? Is that me? We don't know. All right. Okay. All right. How are you with exorcism? I think it's this one. Uh, only done once. Okay. Anyway, so it's gonna be that kind of day. It's past the pause. Okay. Uh, wow. Just a reminder, grab the maroon folders that are in your pew, um, fill out your name and information and send it down the pew so others can fill it out, please, um, and then uh, send it back and look at who's in your pew um, so that you can uh, be more aware of who's around you. Um, today is uh, First Communion, and we'll bring the families up in just a moment, but uh, for communion here at St. Mark's, um, all are welcome at the Lord's table. Um, if you uh, believe that Christ is truly present and the uh, bread and wine are given, and, uh, given for you for the forgiveness of sins, you may receive, um, receive communion here. Uh, if you would prefer to come up and just get a blessing, that is also uh, an option, so just let us know when you come forward. We have um, options for those that uh, prefer them. We on in right this section here, the will offer um, grape juice as well as wine, and uh, gluten-free bread as well as well as fresh baked bread, which our first communicants baked today. Well, they didn't bake it today, but they baked for today. Um, and just a reminder that we, uh, we celebrate communion by intinction here, which means you take the bread and you dip it in the wine before you eat it. So try and remember that. Um, I know sometimes that's hard when you're a visitor. And, and if you eat it first, we'll take care of you. Don't freak out. Okay, I think that's all of the worship announcements. So at this point, I would like to um, <clears throat> invite our first communicants and their um, parents, guardians up uh, to talk a little bit about First Communion. They are, and I'm going to butcher your names, sorry, Lena Bradow, uh, Heidi Chen, Aaron Friend, Graham Hetrick, and Hunter Nybert. Oh, I think I got most of those right. Hello, all. 
So first communion here at St. Mark's, uh, we do at um, second grade. I knew that. Um, we do at second grade. We do the instruction at second grade. There's some flexibility on other, either side of that. Um, and so we do a class uh, during um, Wednesday night, uh, Faith and Daily Living, um, for four weeks. Yep, checking my facts. <laughs> for four weeks to talk about what communion is and uh, why we do it in the Lutheran Church and uh, where it came from and God's command and um, to help our young people um, be prepared, as prepared as anyone can be, to receive the body and blood of Christ um, and to have God enter into their lives in a special way as the means of grace. So these young people up here have uh, completed that instruction and are Today, we'll be taking First Communion. They'll be doing it with their families during Communion. So the big fuss is now. Their actual First Communion is um, just like coming to a table of our Lord at any other time. So um, right now, uh, Carrie is going to hand out um, certificates marking this day for them. And let's um, join together in a round of applause to um, welcome them to the table. Would you pray with me? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your gift of, of grace through your body and blood in, in bread and wine. We ask that you be with these young people as they come for the first time to receive your body and blood. Fill them with that grace and strengthen them in their lives. Help them to remember that this is for them. And in receiving the body and blood, you forgive them all their sins, that they may be strengthened to go out in the world and share your love. In your holy name we pray. Amen. As you are able, please stand for the confession of forgiveness. <clears throat> we confess our sins before God and before one another. Risen God, we confess to you, to ourselves, and to one another that we have caused harm by the things we have said and done, and by the things we have not said and not done. Take away our sins, that we might fully embody your commandment to love you with all our hearts, souls, minds, and strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. In grace and mercy, God forgives all your sins and with joy and expectation calls you into new life for the sake of the world, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. Gracious God, you call us together in your presence and charge us with the task of bearing your love into a suffering world. Strengthen us for this work that all might share equally in your reign of justice and peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading comes from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, the first chapter. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during the 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white in white robes, stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you to heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. So we're going to sing our hallelujah, hallelujah, like we did last week. Um, we'll still sing it all as one. Remember the hand motions. And if you want to stand up, you can. Or you can just do the hand motions. I'm still being nice. Children, come forward. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Children, come on forward. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Wow, you guys are creatures of habit, aren't you? We're going to get you to do the part two and sing that song. That's my goal. Hey, come up here. You can stand up. We're going to walk around a little bit. Do you ever play the game I Spy? Yeah? Do you like that game? Are you good at it? No, you're not good. <laughs> always, always, at least one. Um, okay, well, we are going to, what does a spy do, first of all? What does it mean to I spy? To find something, right? And how do you find things? You look, right? Right, with your eyes. And so when I say I spy, it means I found something and I want you to see it, right? I want you to find it. So we're going to do... Okay, so just on top of the steps. I'm not going to do the whole sanctuary because that would be crazy. 
Um, I spy something green. All right, I'm going to make it a little harder then. I spy something white. Oh, nope, 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 nope. Whatever that is up there, that was perfect. That's what it is. What is this? What is this? Okay, you may not know what this is called. This is called a veil. What's under it? A cup or a chalice. What do we use that for? To drink from the wine. That's right. For communion, right? That's where um, one of the ways that we give communion. And, and we have this plate or paten, but you don't need to remember that. And what do we put on this? Bread. That's right. So bread and wine are part of communion. And one of the reasons we do bread and wine and, use, and do communion is because Jesus, well, the main reason is because Jesus said so. He told us to do it because it helps us remember what Jesus did for us. What did Jesus do for us? Yeah, died on the cross, forgave our sins, and we are connected through the bread and wine to Jesus. But there's another thing that one of the apostles says. He says, as often as you eat of this bread or drink of this cup. So as every time you eat communion bread or drink communion wine, he says, you proclaim the Lord's death. You tell people about Jesus' death. And that's like being someone who knows something and shares it with others, which is kind of called being a witness. So when we have communion, we're witnessing to what God did for you with Jesus. And today, there's some people, a couple of you up here, that are um, taking communion for the first time. So it's the first time you're going to witness to God's love in your life in this way. You've witnessed in other ways, but that's not what we're talking about right now. So it's the first time you're going to witness to God's love in this way. And God comes to you, comes to each one of us, in the bread and wine. So I want you to remember... That when you spy things, you want to tell, about thing, uh, tell people about it. And we've got God's love working in our lives. We want to tell people about it. One way we do that is communion. Okay? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Thank, you thank you for dying for us, for dying for us. And, rising. and rising. Thank you for bread and wine. Thank you for bread and wine. That, those that nourish our lives. And that bread and wine that gives us grace and forgives us. And that bread and wine that gives us grace and forgives us. Help us to tell others about your love. Help us to tell others about your love. Amen. All right, you guys can go back to your seats. Thanks. of the words of eternal Our holy gospel today is from the gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. 
You may be seated. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, for the rain that nurtures the earth, reminds of our baptism and our tie to you, for the gifts of communion that ties us to you, for the gift of proclamation, of telling the story that not only ties us to you, but helps us bring you to others. Send your Holy Spirit among us now. Open our hearts and our minds that we may hear and take in your story. Bless the words of my mouth that they carry to your people a faithful witness of your love. In your holy name we pray. Can I get a witness? All right, that's two weeks in a row. I'm not going to do that again. Have you ever heard that? Can I get a witness? It's a very particular style of preaching, one which, other than saying that part, I am not good at. It's very effective for some. We, it's, uh, it comes out of the Pentecostal and Baptist um, and uh, Southern and African American churches. And it can be extremely effective. We, had, we have a pastor um, in the Metro Chicago Synod who is fantastic at it. For several years, he served as chaplain for Leadership Lab up at Augustana College, our high, sc- high school youth program that we used to do every year. Well, I guess they're still doing it. And he would get up and he would preach during that week. And he would, he would pull out that, that Pentecostal... Southern Baptist, whatever, however you want to say it, can I get a witness and amen and repeat things until people shouted it loud enough and do, and he just, it was exhilarating. The kids loved it. They loved when Pastor Larry preached. And it was really nice to hear once in a while. I'm Lutheran enough and I have enough of our, well, Norwegian, Swedish, German heritage and piety in me to go, okay, that's nice now and then. Doesn't work for me all the time. Sometimes it's too much for me. We Lutherans tend to be quieter. We don't like to make a fuss. We don't like people to notice us so much. But it's just one style. And the style is based on really letting the Spirit move in us during worship particularly. Again, something we Lutherans try to keep the Spirit tame. We don't try to rein it in necessarily, but we don't want it jumping all over the place. It's just our history, our tradition. But this tradition of, can I get a witness, is it really gets going when you get somebody up to tell a story about their life, specifically tell a story about God interacting in their life. And when somebody gets up, whether it's the preacher, whether it's the choir director, I'm watching you, whether it's just a member of the congregation or an elder or somebody that just had a great thing happen during the week and they want to share that, they give a witness and they get going and they let the Spirit move, and they don't hold it back, and they share that story so that people can experience it as best as possible, and so that people can feel and see how God is working in the world, specifically in that person's life. So people can recognize God working in their own lives. It's witnessing to the love of God working. And that's what Jesus called for today in our Gospel reading. He sent the apostles out. Now this is a little while before he's actually crucified in the way the thing works. The great commissioning. He sends them out two by two and he says go out. It's time for you. I've, I've, I've taught you enough. You've been disciples long enough. Remember the word disciple means one who sits at the master's feet to learn. You've been disciples long enough. I'm going to send you out. You are now apostles. The Greek word apostle means sent out ones. Ones who have been sent out. You are sent out now to take what I've taught you and share it. And he said, but here's the rules. 
You go together because there should always be two of you. We are people of community. We are designed to be in community with each other. And when you go, you take a staff, you wear one tunic, and you wear sandals. That's it. Don't bring, don't bring bread. Don't bring money. Don't bring your dog. Don't bring your favorite travel pillow. Don't bring a Starbucks card. Just go. And, and you got to wonder, why did he say that? I mean, didn't he want them to be comfortable? Well, he wanted them to rely on the community that they went into. He wanted that community to take care of them and them to know that care. And it was, it was a much more normal situation back then, expected that when strangers came into your community, you took care of them. We don't do that as well these days, but it, that was just expected. So he wasn't worried about them starving or any of that. But he also wanted them to not bring things that took away from the message. He wanted their witness to be the focus. He wanted when people looked at them and listened to them that people only heard the message. They weren't like, ooh, that's a nice tunic. I wonder who his tailor is. Ooh, look at those sandals. Manola blonde, I can't even say it. They got red soles. That's a different one. He didn't want that. He didn't want them looking at other things. He wanted them focusing on the message. He didn't want the, the apostles to have anything to distract the people from hearing about the love of God working in the world. And he didn't want the apostles distracted by their own stuff. He didn't want the apostles going, oh, I'm not going in there. My shoes are going to get muddy. He didn't want the apostles going, where can I put my backpack? It's got my laptop in it. I'm worried about that instead of focusing on the message I've got. He wanted people focused on that message, on that witness. And he wants you and I to be witnesses too. He said to the apostles, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in all of Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, let's think about travel back then. How many of them got to the ends of the earth? Paul got pretty far, but he wasn't an apostle yet. Peter got around. Some of them got around the earth as they knew it. They didn't get to the ends of the earth. I do not believe, as some religions believe, that Jesus and his apostles got over to North America, for instance. They didn't get there. So who was this ends of the earth thing? Who's bringing the witness? You are. I am. We are are still witnesses. We are still apostles sent out ones to bring the witness to the people that need to hear about God working in the world, that need to hear about the love of God that's so strong He gave His only Son, to need, that need to hear about how everyone is accepted into the death of Jesus and into the glorious resurrection we celebrate. You and I are witnesses of that wonderful truth, that wonderful story. Now, some of you are going, oh, I don't like talking in front of people. I, I even have trouble praying. I don't want to do that. I'm not good at that. That's okay. And some of you may be thinking, well, this is not such an easy job. There's a lot of information in that Bible, and I don't know it all. Yep, that's true. There's a lot of information in that Bible. Very few people know it all. Very few. Not me. Paul might. You're welcome. And, you know, sometimes I have some doubts. So how am I going to be a witness? How am I going to do that? Sometimes I'm not sure about Jesus walking on water or the virgin birth or I don't know what it is that we all have, some of us have doubts about. Well, we all have doubts at times. But 
That doesn't stop Jesus. That doesn't stop God. He still wants the message. He still wants witnesses taking the message out to the world. You see, that's been a problem since the beginning, since before Jesus. Last week I talked a little bit about all the different versions of the resurrection story in the Bible. The Bible is full of contradictions. And you have to just kind of accept that. I always tell people, the Bible is 100% true. It is not 100% factual. Let your mind wrap around that a little bit. It's a very Lutheran thought because it's very heady. People made mistakes when they wrote it down. And before they wrote it down, they told it orally. If you go through the Old Testament, you'll see there are things that are repeated, and you're like, why are they repeating this right here? We just read that. Because it was rote memorization. And it was told in a certain way so that people who didn't read, couldn't write, could remember it could know the story of God. And then when they did start writing it down, they took things from different traditions, and so some of the things are not exactly right. Was Mary the first one to the grave, or was it, and was it open when she got there? I don't know. Sometimes we have to step back and go, well, does it matter? Getting a witness can be difficult. In fact, any of you that have taken basic psychology any time in your life, probably have studied the fact that eyewitnesses are actually terrible witnesses. They generally are not accurate. And the more people that see an event, the more likely you're going to have different facts and different stories. Because people, we take things in from our own perspective. We see things as we see them. The things that hit us are the things that connect with us in some way. But they connect with somebody else differently. And it gets distracting. So getting a witness can be very distracting. And it's a hard thing to do. And yet Jesus still calls you and I to be witnesses to the ends of the earth, to tell the story. And sure, we have the Bible that tells us the story that's been kind of condensed so we have the basic understanding. We have Sunday school teachings and hopefully sermons that have told you things and songs that tell us. It's a very Lutheran thing. Our music proclaims more than it chats with God. It proclaims what happened because we are witnesses. And we take that and we can pass it on. But what's really important, what, what God really needs from us, not needs, what God really wants from us, is to be a witness like those Pentecostal Southern Baptist, filled with the Spirit, people telling the story. <clears throat> Not so much a story that anyone can read, but the personal stories of God in your life. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to get up here and be filled with the Spirit, unless you want to, and we can talk about it, but, and tell the story of God working in your life. But we witness to the love of God repeatedly through how we live. We witness to the love of God, not just with words. In fact, we stay away from words sometimes and witness to the power and love of God in the way that we interact with others, the way that we go out into the world. We see God working in our lives and we tell people about it. Not necessarily big groups. It could be in a phone call. It could be in a letter. It could be in a journal entry. It could be over coffee or whatever. We proclaim God's work. We do things like come to worship. That's one of the ways that we proclaim what God wants. That's one of the ways that we have to think about not distracting from the message. Because if the message is important in your life, if this God stuff is important, then we show other people it's important by making it important for us. And it can come in different ways. Did you know landscaping can be a witness? In my first congregation, it was a congregation that was over 100 years old. The church had been there forever. And so had the plants, the shrubbery, the landscaping in front of it. And it was big and overgrown and so old that it was like hollow inside and looking terrible. And they were like, well... 
we don't need to spend money on that. And somebody said, I, want, I would like, they gave money. They want to do it. And they said, well, let's make it simple. We'll just put the same thing back in. And I said, really? Let's talk about that. Now, I have to recognize my brother was a landscape architect and I had enough information to be dangerous. But we talked about it and said, you know, if we put ugly plants in just because they're easy, then what do people think? Might as well just leave the ones they got. Because people drive by and they go, oh well. But if you put a nice, and I'm not saying spend tons of money and make everything amazing. We don't spend tons of money here and our grounds look beautiful. But you do that and people see it and they go, wait, people care about that. Whatever they're doing, it's important to them. That might not bring them in, but it certainly says something about what we do. That's why we build big, beautiful buildings like this. Yes, to glorify God, but the idea is we build them, we take care of them because they draw attention. They show why God is important in our lives. It's not the only way. And we have to be careful, remember, one tunic, a staff, and sandals. Sometimes we have to be careful to not let the building and grounds and music and all those things that we, we love and need and want get in the way. Sometimes when we're a witness, we have to keep it simple. We have to let go of the things that are most important to us because our job is to get to those people. Get to the people that haven't heard. Get to the people that don't know the activity and the strength of the love and power of God working in their lives. And we don't want to take away from that. So sometimes we have to let go. Simplify. And let our witness be our presence. Be our interaction. Be our strength. Whether it's going out into the community and serving one of the many uh, organizations that our outreach team oversees or helping a neighbor that is in need or helping a stranger. And we don't necessarily have to talk about why we're doing it for it to still be a witness. You don't have to give the full story. You don't have to break down the Bible and explain all the things. You don't have to make them kneel and take and say a prayer. You can, if they're open to it. But remember, you don't want to distract. So if you trying to force part of it on them in your way is distracting from the message, back off. Leave that tunic at home. Because to be the witnesses to the ends of the earth, you have been given the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will work in your life and the Holy Spirit will fill you up and you will be nourished by the communion table to go out and live the message. Live the witness so that others can know it too. Jesus said, you will be my witnesses. And he promised everything you need to do it. Amen. M482.
now trusting in the promise of the resurrection. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. O oh God, you send us out into the world to bear witness to your transformative love and justice. Give us the words to say and the opportunities to say them that all might experience the fullness of your presence. God of new life, hear our prayer. Creation witnesses to your power and glory, O oh God. Make us partners with the natural world, ever aware of our interdependence and committed to our mutual flourishing. God of new life. Hear our prayer. Soften the hearts and minds of those who govern through fear and oppression, and open them to partnerships with other nations for the benefit of all. God of new life. Hear our prayer. Be with those in our families, our lives, and community who suffer illness, trauma, grief, and all forms of pain and loss, especially on this day. We pray for Ron, Jean, Shannon, Joe, Nicole, Annie, Jerry, Ed, Warren, Lloyd, Dan, Jim, Marilyn, Phil, Carol, Nancy, Jeffrey, Kim, Larry, Michelle, Cora, Mason, Diane, Rick, Diane, Pat, Marnie, Jenny, Beverly, Lois, Jim, Paul, and Kathy. And those we name silently or out loud now. Gus, Nancy. Help us to bear your healing love to them. God of new life, hear our prayer. Inspire, strengthen, and support missionaries in their work to build communities and contribute to the health and well being of all they serve throughout the world. God of new life, hear our prayer. And we remember with gratitude the saints who carried your word into the world from the beginning of the church through to this very day. May we follow in their example to be open about our own faith that others may follow after us. God of new life. Hear our prayer. We pray, place into your arms all for whom we pray, O God, out loud or in our hearts, confident in your mercy and grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We share a sign of peace with one another.
Let us pray. God, the source of every good thing, we offer come our gifts and our time for the sake of bearing witness to your transformative work in the world. Accept these gifts as a sign of our commitment to the work we have entrusted to you. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sins, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh. Oh. sent out as witnesses, they needed to come together to focus. So with occupying armies marching through the capital, Jesus gathered his disciples in an upper room. He took a loaf of bread. He blessed it. And he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
please stand as you are able. Now may the body and blood of our precious Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in his grace. Let us pray. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. And now, dear friends in Christ, may the God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Okay. Yeah, you might want to sit down. It's after Easter. There's a lot going on. Uh, okay, first up, next Saturday is our ABC night, which is um, a bingo and chili cook-off. Um, it is from 6 to 8. Tickets are on sale. Uh, you can get them online or out in the narthex. Um, and I know out there we have chefs. I don't know if that's what you call a person that makes chili, but it seems like it would be. We need some chili chefs. So uh, if you would like to whip up your favorite batch of chili and bring it on Saturday, that would be great. We need a few more people doing that for tastings and uh, voting and all that stuff. It's a fun night. Um, and if you don't have a favorite, make it up. I did that one year and almost won. <laughs> I think it was a fluke, so don't expect that. Um, okay, and then, uh, wow, when I wrote these things last night, they made more sense. Oh, yes, the following Saturday on the 20th uh, is the craft show that our own Joni um, kind of oversees, and uh, some of the proceeds from that are given, uh, Joni gives to the congregation, so um, that is on the 20th, and look for details in the email. Our What's Possible next uh, steps are happening. Um, they've been scheduled, so if uh, you want to continue to be, well, please continue to be part of the conversation. You can do so um, for about gathering and youth on uh, Wednesday the 10th, and then there will be yet another one. Each one of these will be a little different um, on Wednesday the 17th. And then if, uh, to, when you want to join us to talk about worship, I can talk, I know. Uh, those will be on the 14th, which is a Sunday, and the 20th, which is a Saturday. So look at those, get them on your schedule, um, come and join us for those uh, if you need more details. Again, Friday email. Adult, Adult Fellowship is, has an interesting uh, event coming up, uh, if for no other reason than I had a horrible time pronouncing this last night. Apparently I did it wrong a number of times. It is the Shingotha Museum. No? Nobody? Maybe? All right. There was a lot of energy behind that last night, so I'll tell you what. Uh, so look for the details about that. And the youth uh, will be selling, or are selling, butter braids uh, for Mother's Day, Father's Day. You can freeze them, buy many, have lots of things ahead of time. You can go online right now, and, um, or maybe not right now, but you can go online anytime to buy those, to order those. Um, or our youth will also be in the narthex taking cash and check orders um, and then pick up, ask them. It's a Wednesday, that's all I know about that. So um, lots of things going on. Uh, so be looking and uh, see you in our continuing conversations and social events and eating and all the things. Okay, now we can sing. Please rise as you are able. Mm -hmm. Too much. Oh. You gotta cut out right away. Yeah. Yeah. I love to tell the story. Oh. 
You shall be my witnesses. Now go in peace and serve the risen one. Great work. <laughs> <laughs> 